Hello, Savannah. Thank you again for tuning in to Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer. Thank you so much for tuning in. I never get the transitions right, I swear. I need to practice so much better. So I'm here in the studio today, and thank you so much for tuning in with two guests, my um, awesome two guests. We've been doing lots of field trips this week. Hi, Mary. Hi, and how are you, Eric? you want to introduce yourself, Eric, too? Sure. Yep. Yeah, my name's Eric, and I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Julie. All right. Great. Great. Well, we've been doing all kinds of field trips this week, and we want to share what we found out and what we've been up to this week. We've actually, we we're just talking right before the show, and um, before I get into that, let me just tell you, you're listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. And also, the viewpoints expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of WRUU, its license holder, or its staff. I'll make sure I read that because we have a lot of opinions on this show. <laughs> so um, we're, trying to, we're trying some different things here, dear Savannah listeners. And thank you so much for tuning in, bearing with us. We have some fun stuff prepared, but um, so this week, the show, I wanted to make the show about tax sale foreclosures. That's one of the things that everybody always asks me about on all my YouTube videos. Everybody wants to know how to get cheap properties, how to do the legal process. Um, in fact, the reason I know Mary and, and um, Eric here is because they came to me to learn, and now we're all learning together, which is even better and much more fun. But um, yeah, yeah, so this this week we this week and last week and continuing later this week actually, right, Mary? That's we're, right. We're going to be going to um, we're doing um, tax sale foreclosures in South Carolina, which is just across the border here, not very far away. And I guess we can talk about what we did. I mean, we started with um, we actually wanted to go to tax sale foreclosure sale here in Savannah. In Chatham County this month, you guys went last month, and we, we kind did kind of touched on that on the last show. And you actually bought a property. We did, yeah, yeah. Aline, uh huh. Aline, yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah. So for the listeners in Savannah here, um, Georgia is a lean state. And um, again, backtracking, if you haven't listened to my previous shows, what I'm talking about is investing in taxes that aren't paid on real estate. In some states, the lien is sold. In other states, the actual property, the deed is sold on um, taxes that are unpaid. Here in Savannah, of course, we, it's a lien state, and you get a sheriff's deed when you purchase the property, and you guys actually did get your sheriff's deed. In yes, now. we did. Mm -hmm. And so um, the property, and I'm not going to say addresses or names or anything like that. We're not going to get into that. But you guys actually went to the auction with me. It was fierce competition. It, it was, was. <laughs> in November. <laughs> And the end, I, c I can tell you, Savannah listeners here, the story is that quite interesting. Um, there was, a, I guess, a developer and construction developer or um, construction uh, business owner at the auction. And he's there quite frequently. And he was bidding on a piece of property that was adjacent to a, um, to a church mm -hmm. or a church. Maybe it was a church so, yeah. lot. Mm -hmm. And the, there was ladies there from the church that wanted to really buy that property to put it back with the church or whatever reason and and he wanted it and they wanted it and they were bidding and bidding and bidding up and, and it, they got very angry i mean they, they actually did. the yeah. ladies from the church were the angry ones i have to say yeah that's true i mean he was very neutral very composed he did not react but he was definitely provoked at that auction and, and to the point that other people were actually chiming in and and saying like why are you taking away this property from from the church and yeah, he was very calm, and he said, "You know, it's a, it's a good deal. I'm not walking away from a good deal." And that was it. And I believe the church ladies actually did win. They the did. Property, so. They did get it. Yeah, they did. So higher powers were at work here from from up above, I guess, <laughs> and it was all good. But you guys bought a property, and I think you. I, mean, I don't know if you want to go into the prices, but we're not talking addresses here. But I think you guys paid maybe like. Nine hundred. It was a nine hundred dollar initial bid, right? It was, and there was someone else interested in the property. And um, when we go to any kind of sale like that, I think one of the things that's really important before you go is to have in your mind what your maximum bid is going to be. If you haven't been to those, they can get very. Um, you can get really tangled up in the bidding process. Uh, you need to leave your emotions out of it. 
Um, it's a financial transaction, and so you need to know where your upper limit is. And we were just about to reach the upper limit, and the other guy quit bidding. So we were able to get it just below, um, you know, what the maximum was we were going to buy for or pay for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what happened after we purchased it, uh, you know, then we had to go get the, secure the funds and, and then come back and actually pay the county um, for that. And um, shortly after that, I think it was maybe a month or so ago, um, or a month after we bought it or something, the, the property owner actually contacted us. And they have the option, uh, there's a redemption period here, and so they have the option uh, to redeem that uh, before we can actually get the deed to the property. And so he's already contacted us. Um, it was kind of a sad story, won't go into it, but um, he didn't realize what was going on. His children had been living in the home and apparently uh, didn't keep up with the taxes. And he found out the taxes were delinquent when he got the notice from the county that we had bought the lien. So he's very interested in redeeming that and paying us off, which is fine. Um, you know, we want uh, everybody to win in this situation. You know, we were able to uh, uh, keep his property uh, from going further beyond this point, and he had the opportunity to redeem it. So hopefully that's all going to work out for him, and, and uh, you know, we're going to make some money, and uh, he's going to be able to keep his home. So It wouldn't hurt maybe just to mention a few facts and figures. One mm-hmm. of the things we did was we checked out the property by driving by. So oh yeah, a, absolutely. A rough estimate of what it was in case we were to get the property and that also helped us to set the upper limits. And I think um, just some rough numbers, I think we estimated that that property could be um, sold for $40,000 and so 10% of that was $4,000 and that's actually our upper limit. We ended up paying uh, 38 or 3750 37, um, and so uh, we were comfortable, you know, at, at those at those valuations. In the end, um, we'll at least make 20% on our initial investment um, or, or get the property. So either way, we're going to come out okay. Right. And that's one of the things that everybody, um, you have to figure out what, your own, what you're comfortable with in your own mind. Uh, for us, it's 10%. That just happens to be uh, the, the number that Eric and I are comfortable with. Um, some people, you know, um, maybe are more comfortable paying more. Um, but just, just know beforehand, before you go to an auction and you get involved in that, because uh, like Julia said earlier, the, the first property they bid off was this church property and it got pretty emotional and I'm even bystanders you know uh, that weren't even interested in the property it was kind of an emotional kind of uh interesting thing to to be involved with and so yeah definitely I mean when I was watching that going back and forth I I stepped a few steps away because I thought yeah it was going to get hurt in fact the lady that was conducting the sale said hey if you guys don't calm it down I'm going to get the police officer from inside right. the courthouse and, right. and make you guys behave basically yeah she did so um when you go to these i i don't think that's typically common um at these auctions i don't think that they're always that heated up no, but but not. you know they can be and and you yourself if you see a property um that maybe you're interested in buying and you have someone bidding against you which is probably going to be the case um you just need to know what your upper limits are and and try and keep the emotions out of it and and uh, it you know, for us, it's a, a financial decision, and um, so we're pretty adamant about sticking to, you know, um, our pre, um, pre-decided pre numbers. And and the way we did that, uh, like Eric said, is you can, um, it's public information, so you can get information off the property card as to what the assessed value is and uh, maybe what the retail value is. And the other thing that we did is once we found the property, uh, we went on to, uh, I think it was Zillow or, or something like that, I think I went on, and kind of just checked to see what properties had sold recently in that area to get an idea of what they are actually selling for. So after doing um, that kind of research and uh, deciding, you know, that um, if something happened and they didn't redeem it, we end up with the property, that number one, we actually wanted to end up with the property, and if that was the case. And then we knew, you know, what the value of it uh, could be, and so that helped us um decide you know where we wanted to be when purchasing that lien so i think that's important yeah actually um we got the list um before the auction the mm-hmm. uh, county gave us um gives everybody a copy of the list uh, for the asking and um th- i think they 
publish it in the paper too, probably. Um, but uh, we actually drove by um, a long list of properties we did. and did our due diligence before we even went to the auction, days before, so that and, we were prepared. And due diligence is, is such a great topic. I mean, we can go hours and hours. Actually, I did a YouTube video yesterday in my car waiting for my son to get out of karate on due diligence, actually. Mm -hmm. And I, have, I actually developed my own six-step process. Of course, everybody does their own thing. But um, it's very, very important because some of the things that can happen if you don't perform due diligence are, they're funny. She's laughing <laughs> here. And it is funny because some of the stuff that has happened to me, buying properties that, are, that have half a piece of um, uh, building on it, buying property tree through the roof there was a property on that last list we went look by and there was a tree that tree? had fallen through the roof that's right that's right yeah. and um and i saw that that actually mm -hmm. it's good that you mentioned that because that one was on the list several times yeah and it happened after irma and that tree was there then there was a big hole then there was a uh, plastic on top there at some point yeah. i don't know if the if you if there was the actual tree still when you looked it at was it. Okay. It was okay. still there. <laughs> yeah, that's something that you're not going to know by looking at the list or looking at the property card. Mm -hmm. Because if there's been recent damage or if the house burnt to the ground or something, that's not going to be divulged through the county um, that quickly. So um, you need to be aware. And I think there was another one on that list that we talked about, uh, Julia, that uh, we went by. Well, one of my, we couldn't even find the address. So I don't know what was up with that. And then one, you went by and the house was gone. Yes. So yeah, there yes. was so there was a vacant lot. So you really, really have to, um, if you're going to get involved in this, you really do need to take time to anything that you're interested in and seriously, you know, bidding on or, or trying to make a purchase on, you need to physically put your eyes on that property. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's yes. very important to do that. Yes, for sure, actually. And, and that's a good point because that one property that you said there was no house on it, there were several people actually trying to bid on that standing yeah. next to me, and they thought there was a house on it. And I'm like, you know, there's no house on it. And they're like, no, no, no. We looked at the property card. There's a house. It's taxed with a house. I'm like, yeah, but you didn't drive by there. There's right. no more house there. And I drove by that street at least four times. I mean, I turned around my car, and I kept going and going. This is one of those times where you'll probably get the police called on you. And <laughs> because you're cruising the neighborhood. Cruising the neighborhood <laughs> with a real nice fancy car, in my case. And I just don't belong. And, and I totally expect that. I mean, these are people have never seen me. They don't know my car. They don't know what I'm doing there. And people mm -hmm. call the police, and which is what they should, which is what I would want my neighbors to do if sure. somebody was cruising there. But that doesn't, um, we talked about that the other day when we were coming back from South Carolina. And, and, and for me, uh, my response to that is, well, great, call them because when they're out here, I'm going to say, is exactly. this a safe neighborhood? What's going on out here? And then you can get some information on the neighborhood to exactly. see if you want. So to me, calling the police on us, if we're trying to uh, redeem a tax lien so the county can have their money or whatever, is not a bad thing. Yes. I, I, I would be, I would not be uh, um, upset by that at all yeah so the only thing that i always had an issue with when when police is called it just delays me i have so many sure. properties to look at that day and i have a schedule and i need to get back to get my kids at three o'clock i can't sure. delay and you know talking to a police officer it's nice sometimes they're handsome young men as we've <laughs> talked <laughs> That's not a bad thing. <laughs> That's not a bad thing at all. <laughs> but it does Maybe delay. Maybe they could call the firefighters out just to have a chat. <laughs> yes, <too>. yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, I've done, yeah, I've had that happen. That's not a bad thing either. <laughs> and actually, that happened to me. I was with another student in in Nevada. I told you that story, right? Mm -hmm. We were cruising in Nevada. It was a bad neighborhood. We didn't know this because we're not from there. Sure. She was from Arizona. I'm here from Georgia. We're going to the auction two days before. We're driving through um, Las Vegas neighborhoods. Um bad bad neighborhoods during the daytime though in our defense mm -hmm. it wasn't too bad and um yeah sure enough police comes out and they're like hey you girls what are you doing here and i'm like hey <laughs> hi hey wave it through <laughs> can you tell me if this is a good neighborhood you know and and obviously and this is another thing that you savannah listeners may not know or maybe you know but um, realtors are not allowed to tell you whether something is a good right. or a bad neighborhood it's not um, it, it's a discriminatory statement sure. and they have to be very careful. I mean, they keep certain things they can't say. And um, I've heard many times the frustration with investors or even just people that want to buy a house. They go to realtors and they're like, hey, tell me the good neighborhoods, tell me the bad ones. Realtors can't tell you that. Uh -uh. 
But a police officer can. You bet. <laughs> you betcha. So can the fireman. Fireman can and the neighbors can. Anybody, sure, anybody that's a public in a public servant type uh, situation can answer those questions mm-hmm. for you. So so it's a good thing when the police come out, except for it delays you, I guess, a little bit. So that's, that's my but, thing. Yeah, but you can get information you maybe can't get otherwise. So. Yeah. Yeah. So don't worry about that if that happens. But, um, yeah, that's one of the things that uh, that that I think is real important. And, and some people, and I noticed that too at that last auction, some people miss that step, and that can be very costly if you're not uh, doing some due diligence. Um, and you can do it to whatever, you know, level of comfort that you have with it. Um, I believe that when we talked about this before, uh, the people that redeem those liens um, is fairly high, isn't it? Like two thirds redeem them. Um, is that what you said? Or well, is you know, and and this is another question I often have on my YouTube um, videos and questions from subscribers and things. Um, by the way, if you're listening, um, you can always send me a message: real estate at Julia M. Spencer dot com, and check out my YouTube videos if you want to. They're free to watch for anyone, and just search my name, Julia M. Spencer, but th- the question was okay. Losing track here. <laughs> no worries. Ma- tax liens. You know, once you purchase them, there's a redemption period, yes. and there's a pretty high percentage of people the who do redeem period, them. Yes. So there's a way to set up a system where you can kind of gauge by yourself how many are redeeming and how many aren't, and people go into these auctions to know exactly what their system should be, and the people go in specifically to end up with properties and then there's people that come in specifically to just get the penalty in this case not interest rate or penalty mm-hmm. whichever state and then there's other people that are um they kind of don't know they're kind of just stabbing in the dark so so when i what i've done before what i've told people is that typically in my case it was two-thirds of properties that did redeem mm-hmm. and but m- the ones that i buy are very much at the low end um, I'm usually the only bidder. Sometimes there's maybe somebody that'll bid like a little bit further up, but I, I don't pay crazy prices. So I'm very much at the bottom. Properties are usually vacant. They're not homesteads. They've been deserted for a while. So it's a very high chance that nobody will come and get them. Mm-hmm. And um, even then, about two-thirds do redeem eventually. So so I usually say for, for my system... Out of five properties that I buy, usually one or two I get to keep. Mm-hmm. And that goes for improved real estate as well as land. Sure. Although land has a higher percentage, by the way. Land has a higher percentage of people just not coming back to get it. Right, right. And that's one of the things that we've been kind of uh, expanding into and been interested in doing. And that's uh, one of the things that we went to s- over the South Carolina yeah, for. Yeah, let's talk about South Carolina here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we went there, uh, got the list. Went and talked to him, got the list. Um, We're talking them over the counter now, so let's let's just back right. up. The reason we went to South Carolina is because um, Chatham County sale here in December, first Tuesday of the month for tax sale foreclosures was canceled. And the reason was they kind of give people a break for December and January, I guess. That's the explanation I got. So we're like, okay, where else can we go? Checked out all the other counties, adjacent counties in Georgia. None of them had anything in December. But South Carolina has over-the-counter sales. So do you want to go into what over-the-counter sales? Sure. Um, the over-the-counter sales, are they have their auction once a year where Chatham County has it monthly. And so uh, after they have their tax sale every year, then the properties that are not purchased at the sale are then available over what they call over-the-counter. And so we went and got that list and um, looked at it, brought it back, uh, brought it back, uh, searched the properties that we were interested in, looked at them, uh, got addresses, got all the information we could find on them, and then we did a road trip uh, and went back. Road trip number one. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, and we went back and we actually looked at the properties we were interested in. After looking at them, then we eliminated some more. You know, and you can do this by going on Google Maps, and um, there's all kinds of ways to look at it, but I, I still think it's important that you... Um, if possible, you can physically... And spe- we did those things. We actually we did. looked at it on Zillow. We looked at it on Google Maps. We looked mm-hmm. at it on the GIS plat uh, service from the county. Uh, we got the estimations of value, uh, value by, from these different sources. And so in case we actually um, 
bid on the property and ended up getting the property. We wanted to make sure it was something that actually fit our portfolio that we wanted. That we and, really wanted, yeah. And, and it turns out there's several of them that we didn't want at all, but we wouldn't have known that until we did all of that and drove by. Well, yeah, because they look good on paper. Yeah, and, and let's talk about the reason why we excluded them, because there was some some pretty good reasons. So, for example, there was a couple lots that were landlocked. There was yeah. no street. Yeah, it there was no was way to access them. In the woods somewhere, behind some other lots that belonged to somebody else. So the only way to get to it is by, I don't know, helicopter? helicopter? <laughs> Jump out of an airplane? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so those are big no's. But then yeah. there was also properties that um, had dual zoning, actually. And we're still looking at that one, by the way. There was one property where um, we were told by the city or by the county officials, I correct myself, mm -hmm. um, that part of the lot that the house was sitting on was um, rural residential, and part of it was um, Jasper County um, conserva Nature Cons Preservation yeah. Zone. So it was very confusing. It was very confusing. They couldn't even tell us exactly at the courthouse what that meant. Uh -uh. But the only thing they said is, well, it looks like there's a house on there. So I guess And there was. <laughs> and there was because we drove and looked at it. And it was right there in the middle. So, um, I mean, what would what are we going to do with that? We don't know. We don't know yet about that one. That's no. kind of questionable. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. One of the um, criteria that we use to decide if we want to bid on it, it, which in this case we would be the first bid and only bid, so we would um, – get the lien and ultimately um, possibly the property so one of the criteria is um, is it sellable can we actually sell it is it desirable to somebody else would they be interested in purchasing it if it's um, something that is uh, in an undesirable location or um, waterlogged or you know has some other problems um, sure it's a piece of land that you get for cheap but how who wants to buy that uh, who's your you know who you're going to sell it to so yes well there was one particular lot that was that is uh in a marsh area that we were interested in and we went by and drove by and looked at it and there's lots of properties around it that's built stuff so um what we did um is we needed to find out if it was buildable now the county said did was the county say it was buildable or did we just find out from the lady anyway we called um it's in a its own little community. It's a little island, and so we made a phone call. Um, or Eric, Eric's very, very good at research, much better than me. So he did some research on that and found the person to call. And we actually talked to the lady and her husband who have developed that whole island, mm -hmm. and she lives oh, really? in one of the lots next door. Yeah, we haven't got to tell you this yet. No. And so she um, is very familiar with that, and she said yes, it's definitely buildable. She explained it all to us, and we're actually going to go back Saturday. Uh, we have an appointment to go back and meet with her and her husband and cool. actually get walk on the, the get on the lot. Yeah, walk, the, walk the lot. It's her it's her yeah. neighbor's lot, and they uh, obviously haven't developed it, so they um, don't live in the neighborhood. The the people who own uh, it owe, own yeah, the lot. who own it and and owe the ta owe the taxes. Um, but the neighbor uh, encouraged us. She said that it. Uh, we asked if there were any troubles with the lot. Um, was it buildable? Mm -hmm. Are there any covenants and restrictions and all of that? And she told us everything we needed to know and actually encouraged us. And actually, something else we found out that you're not going to know from the county, and this is very important. There are HOA fees affiliated with this lot because of the development. Now, it's not um, a gated community, but it's its own little island. Yeah, yeah. And um, so because we found that take, out. They take care of the common areas. So, you know, if we owned the property, we'd have to pay the HOA fees in addition. Right. Yeah, which in this case is actually affordable. She told us it was mm -hmm. $351 a, a year. year. A year? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have to factor that in to yeah, the yeah. purchase. So, well, it's, hey, so let, me, uh -huh. let me just hold off for a second because I have a lot more questions about this and we're, we need to get into that. But let me um, let me do some housekeeping real quick because sure. we're, like, we're like, this is what we do all day. This is fun. This is our hunt here. And I need to know this information because I want to go with you on Saturday. Um, but let me um, just do some real quick housekeeping because um, it's the bottom of the hour and I wanted to remind you that you're listening to Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer and you're listening on WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul 
And if you enjoy our programming on WRUULP, please support the station with a donation. As an individual, you can give any amount, become a basic station member, or become a serious fan of the station. To check out membership rates and to donate to the station, go to www.wruu.org slash individual and select to donate monthly or subscribe to an annual membership. Again, to donate to the station, go to www.wruu.org slash individual and select to donate monthly or subscribe to an annual membership. Thank you for listening to and supporting WRUULP. And um, this is actually the most awesome radio station ever, (laughs) if I may say so. I'm a volunteer here. I love it here. And sometimes they let me play my own music. And this is my first. So I'm going to try to play a song, one of my songs. And hopefully I can do this right on the board. I have everything, all the buttons are correct. And hopefully the music will start here in just a few minutes. And if not, then... We will just play along and see if we can get it working. And we are not. So, okay, so we got to talk a little bit longer here, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> no We're worries, still. no worries. No, it's just, uh, that's just one of the things, one of the things that I can uh, say is that um, you can't be bashful or shy in this business. Um, make some phone calls, ask questions. You know, people, um, for the most part, are very willing to help you and, and, uh, you know, um, it's kind of like a, um, what would you say, a treasure hunt. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like going on a treasure hunt. It's really a lot of fun. Uh, we've done s- different trips with Julia, and it's always been fun. And have you got it going? Yes, I think so. So We're going to play you a song. We're going to play a song. Hopefully I can get it right this time. I forgot to click the button here. So, And that was a successful play of my very first song here. That was Florence and the Machine, Dog Days Are Over. And thank you for listening to Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer. Again, you're listening to WRUULP. Thank you for tuning in. And with me here in the studio, I have Mary and Eric, um, fellow investors, real estate investors. And we've been on lots of South Carolina field trips this last week and this week. And um, we were talking right before the break about actually having um, found some properties in a really um, marshy type area. It's like a... A subdivision, like uh-huh. a suburban, sort of suburban subdivision near Marshlands. And one of the lots was right next to the marsh, actually. Uh-huh. It was waterfront, I guess you could say. Right. And another one was a little bit inside the, the subdivision. And so we were talking about due diligence, how important it is to research properties. And you guys have actually found um, a lot more information about these two lots because we were very interested in these. We've been busy. And (laughs) and yes, so let me just give your listeners here um, a little bit of background. What we're talking about is buying over-the-counter tax sale foreclosures in Jasper County, South Carolina, which is just across the border here to the north of um, Chatham County here. And these two lots were going, I want to say, um, I know this is approximate because I don't have my list, but about $2,000 each, maybe 1500 to 2000 each. But the tax assessor value of these properties on the property cards was over $40,000 mm-hmm. on, on both of them. <coughs> now, I actually talked to the developer. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, she, as uh, Mary said, she lives on the island. Mm-hmm. Um, and I asked her just straight out, uh, what... Do the what do you estimate the value of this property to be? Because she's also a realtor and has sold the lots. Yeah, yeah, her and her husband are realtor developers, and um, so uh, she said that she has sold similar lots for up to two hundred thousand dollars in that same for the lot for the lot for the lot for the lot. So, um, so you know, it has a decent fair market value. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that? That you know, that's a very high number. I I would I would question that. <laughs> yes, I agree. Well, she said that it depends. Um, they still have some available on another side of the island that we didn't go to that mm-hmm. haven't been. I right. that hasn't been developed that site or something. But um, she said basically. I mean, the reality of it is, it's gonna it's worth whatever someone's willing to pay for it. Um, but you can kind of get an idea. All the lots she told us were exactly the same size, and we l- learned a lot from her. Um, you can, you have to build a basic footprint 
So you can have as small as like, was it 900 and seven, n- 970 square feet up to like 7,000 because you can go two and a half stories. Mm-hmm. She gave us all the information. We that, had a lot of information. That you would want, like mm-hmm. um, how have the uh, hurricanes affected mm-hmm. that uh-huh. property? Um, That's what a good type question because it's so close right. to the water yeah. there. What is the, uh, the height um, above sea level? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, what are the restrictions and covenants for building, as Mary was just saying? It turns out that, um, you know, for on, on this particular, well, for all the lots in this um, island, that um, you do have to um, follow a few uh, restrictions and covenants for the building, mm-hmm. but they're not very restrictive. As Mary said, there's a no. minimum size, which I think was actually closer to eight or 900 square feet. Yeah, pretty small if you want. But the maximum size is limited by the footprint of the lot and um, building no higher than two and a half stories. Um, and uh, so she gave us a lot of practical, useful information that we would then use to sell the lot if if we ended right. up buying it. Well, and she also works with the builder who builds on those lots. So she has an experienced builder who's built a lot of the properties there. So all, all of that information uh, is very useful to us in, in deciding uh, to move forward or not with this particular um uh, lot and um, I, I just uh, some people are just a little um, can be nervous about asking people questions or maybe talking to strangers or something but it's it's just so important if we had not contacted her uh, we wouldn't have known about the HOA fees um, all that type of thing and partic- particularly there's a lot of um, land that is um, close to water or marsh areas and they can be very lucrative properties or they can be real dogs if they're not buildable so you really have to check those out yeah what you know one of our um, thought processes was uh, well maybe uh, somebody stopped paying the taxes for good reason because it's uh, throwing good money after bad that would be a good question there. Mm -hmm. yeah and so we wanted to find out does this um, lot actually have any true value or is there some problem with the lot so in our case we were lucky enough just by sleuthing on the um, internet to find the uh, property developer for that neighborhood and they uh, took our call and and uh, we've learned quite a bit from them and there as as we've said there are other lots that uh, on that same uh, island that are also tax delinquent that we may be able to pick up as well and mm-hmm. so um, you know it's a good find mm-hmm. And something that was kind of funny um, is uh, when we when we uh, go do this, um, Julie and I usually sit in the front seat and we stick Eric in the back seat. Mm-hmm, yeah. And um, he lets us drive. He lets us drive, <laughs> and and you know he's uh, he's being chauffeured around, so it makes him feel good. But uh, we went by this one lot that was a commercial lot. Oh yeah, I want to talk about that. That's like that's probably our, our prize prize. Yeah, here. wasn't prize it fun? Find. It was fun. <laughs> so we found a. a a nice size commercial lot in a growing area and it s- just so happens that um there's some good amenities around it and there was right behind it the lot right behind it there was some development going on and uh, but they didn't have a sign up we didn't know what was being built but it was something that was fairly large and they were working out there and it was kind of muddy so um you know i was driving and julia was like giving directions and all that and and uh so i just stopped the car and rolled down the window because there was some construction guys over there and I said, uh, I just waved. And me and Joe were like, hey. They you made know? me lay down and, uh, in the back seat. Yeah, we told Eric <laughs> to hide so he'd come talk to us. So, um, <laughs> well, you know, we're waving at this guy. And we're like, hey, we got a question. And he's like walking through all this mud and muck to come I mean, and talk to was, us. It was muddy. It was yeah. muddy. And we just said, hey, um, what, gosh, what you guys built over here? And he told us what they were built. I mean, you you just have to be, um, you just have to get out of your own way. And you just have to be able to talk to strangers in whatever aspect that is if you can talk to neighbors you know construction guys in the mud i mean we talk to everybody i'm i've never been known to be very bashful and um you know you just be nice and they'll give you all kinds of information that's important for you to know if you're looking especially at uh raw land Mm -hmm. um you know with that's not completely developed you know all the way around it you kind of need to know what's going on and we're still doing some research on that one um we're definitely interested but there's a few other issues uh we've even talked to um well um, so you know one of the things i thought it was important because again we don't want to end up with a large piece of land that you've paid um the taxes for um which in this case because it has uh, value to the county they've 
the tax bill is pretty high. Yeah, We're it's pretty substantial. T- tens of thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, we wouldn't want to spend that if we wouldn't want the property. That's the whole point, really, in this mm-hmm. case. And so I actually called two different realtors mm-hmm. and asked them to investigate the property. Land realtors. Land yes. realtors. Yes. So. And so, you know, for nothing, basically. I mean, um, you could say, well, why would they do the work? Well, because if we end up with the property, we're going to have to sell it, and we can use them to and sell it, and they'll the make commission. the commission. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, on a large commercial property, we talked about that. I would not try and close that deal myself. No. Um, oh, no, there would be no way. I would want to involve a realtor. First of all, they have a bigger scope to catch a buyer than we would personally, um, and then it's just worth it to us to be able to uh, list it with a realtor, have them do the marketing, make sure that you know there's a, you know it's closed properly and all that kind of thing and um so we're still in the due diligence phase right and we're talking to realtors about a piece of property we haven't spent it's a dime part, on it's part of due diligence <laughs> it is <laughs> it is, it is. so yeah depending on what you're looking at um like a, a small tax lien on a on a house um is a little easier i think to kind of do all that but when you're looking at raw land Mm -hmm. um and then we had to find out what the zoning was so we checked with the county to find out what the zoning was and what does that mean specifically because it's correct pretty muddy there too and it is muddy and uh but it's buildable it might have to be built up somewhat Mm -hmm. just for you Um, savannah listeners here um what we're talking about is a piece of land that is located immediately off one exit off of I-95. Yeah. I mean, it's it's so close that you could put whatever there and people off the interstate will just come and bring you business. So it's it's next it's across a nice the street. Piece there's of a McDonald's behind. There's a hospital. They're building a hotel right behind Waffle House right next to it. I mean, this property was actually valued at right about a million dollars. And we're talking about a couple tens of thousands of tax bill that's due that you right. can acquire it for, which is a lot but i mean compared to the value of it if that's really actually the value that we could sell it for Mm -hmm. then that's significant and um and the other point that i was going to make is that whatever the tax assessors values a piece of land or any piece of real estate property at is not really the market value and this is why eric said it's very important to talk to realtors right from the get-go because um yeah, they may say it's worth a million, but you can only sell it for half a million. That's that's a big difference. Well, in a property like this, when you're doing your due diligence, you have to look at your um, end result. So if if this all checks out and we move forward uh, with doing this, then the end result is, you know, you're going to pay um, commissions to sell it. So you're going to have more incurred expenses, you know, on this type of piece of property um, so you have to factor all that in as to, you know, to, as to what you're willing to pay for it versus the reward. Plus, there's going to be a holding period because it can't be redeemed until, I mean, the, the current owner um, has until, I think they said November 8th to redeem it. So, And that's uh, obviously a year from now. Yeah. Almost yeah. a year, right. So the holding costs are significant because we'll also owe 2018 Teen taxes. taxes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then the other part with a, with a commercial uh, piece of property like this, um, it doesn't sell as quickly as a residential home that's already sitting there. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it could be up to a year to even find a or buyer longer. or longer. So you're when you're looking at this kind of land and this kind of uh, investment, you're looking at a long-term um holding costs before, so you so you have to calculate all of that stuff in because once you um, buy the tax tax lien, bills keep coming once you once you buy that lien now that is in your name and the tax bills are going to come to you mm-hmm. for every year after that so you have to be ready for that um, when you buy this kind of property so this one's taking us this one is more due diligence than than the tax lien we bought at the Chatham County tax sale yes, but. yes. and and this is something else for listeners too if you want to get into tax sale foreclosures and I teach some of this in my books, also on my YouTube channel, obviously. But um, not every state is the same. So you really, really have to investigate. Um, what we're talking about here is South Carolina. And in South Carolina, you, you purchase the, um, the property. And you will be responsible for all taxes from that point forward. Mm-hmm. And everything in the back that was owed. You're kind of like stepping in the middle. And you're responsible for future and past. Yeah. The same in Georgia. Now, if you go to another state where it's a pure lien state, um, 
and I always use Florida because it's the closest, but they actually sell liens by the year. So you, you pay one year's lien, you're not responsible for future year's lien. Uh, somebody else can buy that or the owner can pay for it. And it, it just works different in every state. But if we, if what we did and what every investor should do is go out there and pound on the doors. And another thing is that you really, I mean, you can do this in your spare time. But if you have a full-time daytime job, it's, it's difficult. Right, because these counties and stuff aren't going to be open mm -hmm. when you're not working. Um, but I, I have found that a lot of them um, are friendly on the phone. Um, uh, Chatham County, I was able to get their tax sale online. Mm -hmm. um, but, of course, up until the day of the sale, some of the properties that were on there when we got the list originally were already redeemed by the owner, so they were no longer on the list. So, you know, those type of things happen, too. But um, I would just say that anyone who's wanting to uh, maybe get into real estate investing, there's a million ways to do it. It's like eating an elephant, um, depending on how deep your pockets are and what you're interested in. You know, you might want to start with something like this because it's not real expensive to get started and you can kind of get your feet wet and kind of play in the real estate world without, you know, buying a hundred thousand dollar house or something. Yes. Um, so and put all your eggs in one basket. I always say that and start kind of small and build <coughs> sure, up. Sure. Sure. And, and get some experience. Well, yeah. one advantage <laughs> of um, buying of uh, using this list after the um, auction has already happened is that the price that's listed for the lien on the property is the only price um it's you're not going to be bidding against anybody else so yes. if yes. Uh, the if the uh taxes are uh two hundred dollars on a piece of property well um you you know that's for the year that they're selling it so you need to ask them you know what's it going to be next year because you'll have to add that mm -hmm. if you have to hold the property for the redemption period um, so, you know, uh, again, for uh, $200, $400, you know, you can um, own the deed to a piece of property. If, yeah. if it's worth having, you, you need to investigate. Yeah, that. and all you have to do is investigate, <coughs> do a little bit of a dog and pony show, which we had to do. It was all in the same building, thank goodness. But, I mean, we did have to go to the deed. It is, to yeah. To the deed office, to the, <laughs> to the office. recorder's office. Planning and zoning. Planning and zoning. Mm -hmm. And um, tax collector and tax assessor, whoever collects the money is not the person that assesses. Right. I mean, so there was five different places. Yeah. We went up and down that courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Uh, and we looked for um, one of the reasons to go to the recorder's office was to look and see if there were other liens on the property because mm -hmm. you'd, oh, yeah. you'd have to satisfy right. those as well. So and IRS liens. Or IRS mechanics liens. liens, all that type of thing. So, and, right. the, and I didn't even, you know, this is where I, she lost me a little bit because she's like, well, some of the liens are against the owner's name and I'm like we're looking at property and they're like no 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 this is on the owner's name so I guess South Carolina is a race to the court state that's what she said and um you you understood that better I did Missouri's a race to the court okay, state well, too explain <laughs> that to us because that's that's a good thing for me to also understand well that means that um whoever if there's multiple liens or if there's a uh, mostly multiple liens the the race to the courthouse is the first one who gets there is is in first place to record it to record it mm -hmm. so um because it's recorded you know by date and time and all that type of thing so um or if uh um let's say that uh, you're gonna buy the lien um and you've and you're going to purchase the lien and but the the homeowner's there and he's going to redeem it or i mean when you have multiple things happening on one piece of property then it's the race to the courthouse and whoever gets there first and files it is the winner so um it's just kind of interesting how that works mostly that works with different types of liens so you don't want to be uh, on there as the third or fourth person in line for a lien because it's you know if it collapses then you're not going to get paid on the lien um and sometimes you don't get paid anyway. It just kind of depends on, on what the people are doing, if they're doing a bankruptcy thing and, you know, whatever. But um, that's kind of what that means. So um, it's mm -hmm. just it's just an interesting deal. For us, um, I don't think it's an issue because these have already been sold. And, um, like, say, for instance, um, if someone bought this and they didn't go back and get it recorded and then we came in and bought the lien and we recorded the lien first then the other people would be out.
because they didn't get it recorded. It's all about getting your stuff recorded. So it's very, very important, not just purchasing it, but making sure. It's, now, some counties do the recording for you. Some you have to do yourself, so you have to know that as well. Um, in Missouri, uh, we had properties and stuff there, and sometimes, you know, I would run to the courthouse and do the recording. Um, other times, uh, the title company would do the recording. So it just kind of depends on the situation, but that's something that you'd have to find out. And counties are real helpful in letting you know those things. So um, it's a fun business, though. It's uh, We've been having a lot of fun with Julia, and, and uh, we have found some fun properties. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, I could just go on for hours and talk about this. This is all so interesting. Um, we, we are almost at the top of the hour, and we are in the Christmas season. We are. And um, I think the next show that's on is, is some fabulous Christmas music here, and um, they're getting ready. So before I go off the air and let them have um, a little bit of, let you all have a little bit of Christmas entertainment here, I, I do need to just play you really briefly a, um, a public service announcement because I forgot, but here it is. And thank you for tuning into Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer. We, we are at the top of the hour and I am about to go off the air, but I wanted to just thank you briefly for Mary and Eric here to join me in the studio. It's so much more fun to have extra people here to talk to. And um, make sure you tune in again next week at lunch hour. It's, I always tell people it's the middle of the week, middle of the day, 12, 12.06. There's a little happiness message before me. And tune in and we have... We will share more adventures. So thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Happy to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And have a great holiday season. For your free guide to real estate investing, visit juliammspencer.com.